So in the end, this video ended up being really long, so I've made it in two parts. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> I thought I had 10 minutes, but no, I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, the salon. Hello to all my subscribers and if you are new, welcome on board. This is Wendy's Pet Salon. I am Wendy and this is my little salon at home. And I do run it like a salon, um, even though it's tiny and I work from home, I still run it as a, you know, uh, a tiny small professional salon um, and there in, in the UK um, we have all sorts of different groomers and they all play a part um, and are looking after your your lovely pets so you know we've got people that work from sheds um, that you've got people that work mobile um people that work in the larger um commercial places there is other big the bigger commercial places um but like the lovely lady um uh, kindly left me a lovely message yesterday um you know no matter what your environment you can create um you know calmness um it is possible. I did do it down there. I always had, um, you know, lavender on. Um, try to keep everything calm. You know, the dogs have, to, you know, to access to the the toilet if they need to, which all adds to their sort of well being. You know, a dog might be more anxious because it needs to go to the toilet, then it'll start barking. Um, so, and obviously for. Um, from a pet groomer's point of view, you know, make sure that you've taken your dog out for, for the toilet, you know, if it is a place. Everybody wants me today. If it is a place that you don't have toilet facilities, you know, make sure that, um, you know, they've been out to the toilet because it's not going to be possible where, they, where they're grooming. So find out, you know, if, if that facility is available. Um, so because it's not always you know um so yeah so thank you very much for your lovely message and i did have a good read of that um and i can see other issues with that as well um because i've been in a similar situation myself um and owners must m must tell the groomers must make the groomers aware of any underlying issues because they can make a choice when they're booking the dog in you know they they might not obviously because like you say they want the money but um you know they can they can choose whether to take that cat on in the environment that they work in or make allowances for that so find a, a nice quiet area that they can you know be a little bit more intimate with the cat you know you can change your environment to suit the pet so the, the, the groomers uh, you must tell the groomers of any underlying issues because obviously added stress is um, is going to enhance a medical issue um, you know, an, an environment plays a big part of that. So, and like I say, I don't start my dog straight away. Um, busy places, they may just crack on, you know, cause they don't have so much time. They've only got so much time to work, you know, and there's, when there's lots of dogs in the vicinity, the sort of energy is quite high because you've got all different types of dog. Um, obviously the beauty of my environment is that I'm working one-to-one -one. not everybody can do that um, and if you over here and most places now um, it's the way of the world the cost of life, living the cost of living is 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 um, so 
this is another reason why I didn't ha I didn't continue with my salon when my lease ran out is because my electric was massive um my water my rent my rent would have would have been due a review so it, it could have hiked up quite considerably um i was lucky in the fact that because it was a small um type of shop it came under the the rate relief so i didn't have that but larger places there is going to be rates to pay um, and if you're employing people or you've got other people working for you, you need to have enough business, obviously, for them to work and for you to have a, you know, pay your bills and have a, um, a wage. And um, this the cost of living is sort of, it's making it very difficult for businesses in, in this country. Um, our town has um, lost a lot of its business and um it's a, a real shame we've got a lot of you know bars and a lot of eating places a lot of takeaways um, because we are just so busy all the time but i just wanted to say thank you very much this is why i do the short practical pet grooms because we are so busy um so I don't call myself a show groomer, I am a pet groomer, so everything that I do is on a short, practical pet style and I'm happy with that and I feel like I can maintain the dogs and the owners have less um, to do at home and they can just continue to be a pet owner. So I just lost myself slightly there, but yes, thank you so much for your message. Um, it does mean a lot to me that when you know you interact with me, um, it feels like I'm actually helping people, um, whether it be a pet owner and a, or a you know a pet professional. Um, we all run our businesses, you know, different. We have all different. Uh, we have different um, setups, don't we? This is lovely Murphy. It's not Murphy. I did Murphy last night. Why did I say Murphy? This is Wilson. you got a new name. And I've been doing Wilson since he was a puppy. And I can tell the difference. I was having a conversation with my customer. Um, I do one of her dogs, but not the other dog. And she left it a little bit late. It was six months. And he is having issues at his other groomers. I'm happy with the groomer. Um, you know, she she it, it comes out looking really lovely. Um, she said he looks like plush velvet. Um, but he's having a few issues in the bath. And all I can say is if you can introduce your dogs at an early age, it does make a whole heap of difference. I can tell the difference between a dog that's been introduced um, carefully as a puppy um, and the ones that have come later on and I'm talking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, sometimes eighteen months um, because they've had no training and like I say, um, like with toilet training and your normal command training, grooming, when you've got a hairy beast, it's very important, isn't it? Um, Wilson's been coming and he doesn't have any issues no no issues I've been doing it it's the same same old me um, so I'm familiar because he's that met me from a small baby he doesn't mind coming do you he, he, he stays short and um, yeah we don't we don't have any problems because we we introduced him at an early age and it is a very impressionable age when they're small puppies. Um, I mean, there are with the exception, but you can you can do things very, very um, slowly and carefully and introduce them in a really calm way. Um, it does really, really help, doesn't it? It does. Yes, it does. So thank you for that message and I've talked your ear off enough and um, 
yeah so no matter no matter what your situation you can create even without essential oils you can create a nice calm environment and it it does make a difference especially if you've got a very lively dog um it's just going to pick up on all the high energy in the room and uh, it's just not going to concentrate and um, then the groomers sort of oh, you know if you have that day in day out it kind of takes its toll on you and accidents happen so um make sure it's the right environment for you and your pet and as a groomer you know make i would insist on making changes um to my environment to just chill everything out and just keep everything calm because it does you get a lot more out of a dog when it's in, in a calm state without a doubt so anyway bye bye um that's that's that so today's actual topic before she goes on i'm going to do ears um and also i have a question for you uh i have my uh, statistics or whatever it is i have a look and see and it tells me certain things and it quizzed me so i'm going to ask you the same thing to see whether you um what you think um but obviously the channel is very small um but there is a percentage of people that watch me on the tv with our smart tvs you can get youtube up on your tv so I'm going to ask, I'm going to give you three options. So, um, how, in a percentage, how many people watch me on TV? Is it 1%? Is it 9%? Or is it 11% of people? Um, you tell me. So that's the question. So if you, you've watched so far and I haven't bored you to tears, um, if you write in the comments, um, and see if you guess correctly. And in my next video, I'll tell you what the answer was. So, um, Wilson here is just kept on a really short practical trip, as always. Um, I'm just gonna talk about each individual dog instead of, uh, I can do another ear ear topic. Yes. Um, I don't find cockapoos on the whole, depending on, you know how um, curly they are um, they don't tend to grow I don't find that they tend to grow too much hair in their ears um, I don't find cocker spaniels grow too much hair in their obviously poodles do um, so uh, you don't necessarily have to take any hair out of the ears but as a as a pet groomer some people do, some people don't. But I just, because I'm doing the same dogs all the time, I am very aware of ear care. And it's most important because a lot of hairy breeds, um, especially spaniel types, um, you know, they've got long ears, they've got their nose to the ground and they're picking up bacteria, so to speak. Um, so it is, a, you know, if it's not cleaned on a regular basis, it's a breeding ground for bugs, bacteria, ear infections. So I'm always careful in the bath is to block off the ear canal. So if there is anything sinister going on, I'm not letting water go further down into the ear to then fester. So that's one thing that I do do when I'm in the, in the bath, I always try and block off and they always let them shake the head because if any water has gone down the ear, they're going to shake it off. It's an automatic reaction. So obviously when I do my, I do always do a quick check. I am touching you. Um, I do a quick check and I always do, you can smell as well. So, you know, I can, it's just an ear, but there are, um, you know, certain smells. You can, if it smells like, uh, yeasty uh, it's got a certain smell so if if I've noticed that the ear is not so clean or whatever I do 
clean it in the bath and make sure that I shampoo around so any dirt, grease, debris is all cleaned away. Um, and if they're cleaned on a regular basis, you are you're keeping that that bug infestation down, if you so to speak. Um, especially when they've got lots of hair here, it soon heats up. Um, so, and that's another thing about my haircuts. I'm always make sure that I take off the hair from under here, so that the air can flow through. So, as a like a, a haircut perspective, you know, not only am I blocking the water when I'm in the bath, but I'm thinking about the haircut and how the air flows around the ear as well, just so that it is going to keep cleaner. Um, I obviously then washed it, wash it when I'm in the bath, um, and I also have um, different types of ear cleaners as well. I've got this one, um, which is just like a routine ear cleaner um, from Pet Drugs Online, um, and then literally, you know, if if I've seen that it's a little bit um, waxy, dirty, and I haven't got it all off in the bath, I'll give it a good clean after. Um, so I'm, I, I, as a dog groomer, I do include sort of ear care in my whole grooming appointment, you know, taking care of inside feet, nails, inside ears, making sure that that, you know, because the last thing we want to do is antagonise anything that's going on in there. So if I have seen something, I'm obviously going to tell the owner, I noticed that such and such an ear was a bit, what's it? I've cleaned it, I've put, you know, some ear cleaner, keep an eye on it, you need to take it to the vets. You know, sometimes, it, you know, they can get ear mites and stuff like that, and there's lots of sort of brown, treacly secretions in there, and they're shaking the head all the time. So, um, you know, I have done it where the dogs have come with an ear infection, and I've just sort of, um, dry shampooed the head. You might have seen I did that on Oscar not so long ago. Um, dry shampooed the head so that I'm not getting any water. So while they're you know, on medication for the ears, I've done all the body. Um, I've made sure it's it's all sort of clean or cut any hair away, um, but I've not put lots of water on the head. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, am I boring you? I'm very sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to get Oscar... Uh, oh my God, you've had two names. Murphy, Oscar. <laughs> Wilson, I'm going to get uh, Wilson in the bath. And um, I'll come back and I'll do his ear shape. Um, he's got, you know, a spaniel type of ear. He keeps a lot of hair on there. They're quite straight. Um, so when I come to doing his ear and um, you know how I do around his ear um, I'll, I'll show you but I don't have to sort of clean out the ear you know every time as long as I've you know washed it with soap and water and it's nice and clean that's fine I don't have to then use any other solutions but if I have noticed that it's obviously waxy and stuff like that I'll give it a good you know um, wash with the shampoo uh, make sure it's nice and clean and then if there's still stuff in there i'll give it a wipe out with the just an uh, like the the general ear cleaning solution um i do i do like the um the herbal dog company one because it, it foams up slightly when you're cleaning them um which is really nice and it's a very fresh smell um so it takes a bit of a tangy smell out of there. Uh, but Auntie Wendy's not got any of that left, have we? But I always keep uh, my cotton wool handy. <laughs> so uh, I always like everything to hand. So I'm gonna get Murphy in the bath. Oh my God, not Murphy. Why do we keep saying that? Wilson. So sorry, Wilson. I don't think he really cares what his name is anyway. Um, so I'm going to get him sorted and I'll come back when I'm going to do his around his ear and his ear shape. So we're all finished. I was going to show you the do the trim, but I was running down a bit with the time because his legs were a little bit knotty. I think uh, maybe 
something's going on at home. Um, maybe busy doing something, that's my guess, because <laughs> it's not normally. Um, I normally notice uh, things like that, you know, if it, 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 like they're busy maybe holidays or something, somebody else is looking after them because uh, it's not normally knotted. So I just want to tuck over his, I will find out as well. So um, if you see um, Wilson's head, <laughs> you see how when I lift his ear up, See, all this hair's gone. Um, when there's a really thick ear, you know, the hair is really thick, I will take the inside of the ear off as well, um, just so that the air can flow. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the whole practical groom as in ear care as well within, you know, so you're thinking of, when you're doing your practical pet styles that you want to last for, you know, a period of time to make them comfortable, Obviously, I'm looking at my foot care, my nails, inside pads, and the same with, you know, the head style, um, because, like, the, the shape of the head style will keep their ears cleaner. And I don't tend to leave a lot of hair here. The more hair there is under there, the sort of warm, the warmer the face is, if you know what I mean. So it's like, you know, you, you're more likely to, to build up that bacteria when you've got a lot of hair there. So you've got a lot of hair, and then you've got a lot of hair on the inside of the ears, and then you've got like a festering ear problem. It's just a breeding ground. So I always make sure um, to help the ear, <laughs> um, is that, you know, I think about the whole face and ear trim, which helps with the ear care. Um, and also that I'm, um, you know, I'm making sure that it's clean and dry, you know, they're not going out with damp ears, unless, you know, they really detest having their head dried, whereas, you know, I'll towel dry as much as I can and make sure that it's, you know, really thoroughly clean. Um, you know, I do have a cockapoo that does not like his head dried, so on the odd occasion, you know, his ears are a little, tiny little bit damp, um, but by the time he leaves, they're generally quite dry. So um, it, it, that's important as well that they're not going out with, you know, damp, damp ears. Wilson's ears are really clean. Come here, sweetie. He's got lovely, he's got lovely clean ears. There's no, you know, obvious, you know, issues there at all. I've given it a good clean. I've not had to put any ear cleaner on it or anything like that. Um, if sometimes they are a little bit yeasty and you know you've cleaned it and you know um, uh, I, I sometimes use the which I showed you before the lucillin you know I might put some lucillin on a cotton wool and just clear give that you know a wipe out because that does help with the cheesy smells and obviously then I would tell the owner um, what, I'd, what I'd found uh, there was something else I was going to tell you. I remembered. It pops. There's so many things that pop in my head. So I'm talking about one thing, but I'm also I've got something else ready to tell you, and then that sometimes slips away. Um, and I think that's just part of my condition, how how I am. Um, if you've got a dog that has had um, some ear problem and it's got lots of solution around the ears and it's all like sticky and greasy i do find the shampoo bars are really helps uh, you know helpful for lifting off that that grime and grease um you know i have sent a i gave uh, one of my customers some soap bar because they came just before christmas i'd have done a groom like weeks previously um but she has a reoccurring ear problem and uh, she got all goo and there was a knot in her ear, so I, I, you know, she wasn't, they weren't able to get it out, so they came quickly and I, I got that out and I gave them a bit of soap bar. Um, because obviously, for all these things to be effective, you want to clean the area before then you put some more on. Are you looking? <laughs> yes. Um, and the next, I'll let uh, Wilson go, but I'll also talk about. Um, what I would do in the salon if um, I come across 
partner. Now I, I work quite closely with my customers, so I know in my head, you know, uh, I work quite verbally with my customers and because I see the same ones, I'm a able to keep track of it. But when you're in a busy salon, you need to keep sort of records because you, you might not see the same groomer. Uh, so that, I mean, that's the good thing about the Savvy Pet that you can put notes down. In our salon, before I had that system, we used to have paper cards. So we'd get the paper card out and we write what time, what date they came for the groom and write down, you know, what blades. If we had noticed anything, maybe there was matting or ear infection or whatever it was. And then we'd sign to say who, who did the dog. We generally did do the same dogs, but at least when you get the card back out, you can look and you can see, oh, last time I had an ear infection. So you know that you can check and look and make sure because uh, it could have got worse if it's not been treated properly um, and you need to obviously let the owner know that you you were aware of it and tell them again um, so that they can you know that it's they might not have noticed that it's flared up again or, or whatever so um, I'll talk a little bit more about that situation once Wilson's gone home Wilson, I'll tell you what I will do. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, let's just have a look at your head. Look, see? Oh, beautiful head. Wilson has very long, straight nails. They don't like they don't bend and touch the floor. They go straight out like a vanilla pod. So we have to make sure that you're. All your nails are. Do you give paw? I'm not sure if he gives paw. Do you give paw? Do you give, give paw? Give me paw. Give me paw. Do you give paw? No. <laughs> right, so we'll see you in a bit. I don't find out why, <laughs> but I think somebody else is looking after him. Um, only for a short period. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to clean up and then I'm going to talk to you, I've got a few minutes before my next one comes, about what we used to do in the busy salon uh, when we noticed sort of ear issues and things like that. So Misty Moo has just arrived and just letting her have a little toilet break before I start. Um, she missed a groom because her nana was poorly and she's got some hot spots that I need to just uh, be mindful of. I probably, you know, she has a normal shortcut and I'll give her some, uh, I'll put some of the Lucillin spray to keep everything calm. Um, so I was going to tell you about what we did when we had, we noticed things, especially ear things in the salon. And being a busy salon, um, there are places maybe where you won't see, um, your dog might not see the same person. Uh, so obviously then we need to make sure that our notes are quite tight. So uh, what we used to do is we used to have what's called a vet refer referral form. So if we'd seen something, you know, maybe a lump or like an ear issue, we'd write down obviously what we'd observed, what we did, and obviously then they could take that slip to the vet. So instead of having them to, you know, tell the vet about it, it's all there in black and white and they can just go, the, the groomer says this. So obviously we'd write down that, you know, the, we've noticed that you've just got ear discharge today and it's smelly, it smells yeasty or whatever. And we'd put down obviously that we'd cleaned the area, um, clean the area with soap and water, we've um, just used an air solution and I'd write down exactly what air solution that we'd use, which, you know, is just a general air cleaner, just to remove the, the, the debris and stuff. Um, and then obviously, if it was really quite inflamed, I might use the Lucillin, so I'll say that, uh, you know, I've uh, wiped over with Lucillin, for instance. Um, so, and then, and then obviously we'd get put that on the notes that they were given a vet referral form. Um, so, you know, anybody else that's trying to, that, that needs to know about it, 
that doesn't know about it, if they get their card, it's all there. So they might come and go, oh, we had an ear infection, blah, blah, blah. And that groomer, the next groomer, has no idea, gets the card. Oh, yes, it, oh, yes, it says that, you know, we gave you a vet referral form, blah, blah, blah. So it just it keeps everybody informed. And um, because if we don't tell the owner and they're not aware of it, they might, might not look, things might get worse. Um, so it's always, you know, a good idea to make sure that when you're doing your grooming, that you notice these things and that you can let the owner know, whether it be verbally or with a vet referral form that they can take to the vets and get the issue sorted. So, and obviously keep on top of your notes. I know I, I'm um, not so much for my notes anymore because I, because I see the same dogs. I tend to remember what I've seen. Um, the odd time I've written down things, um, or um, I generally do it verbally. Uh, and then what I'll say to them is, let me know. So then they'll message me and um, <clears throat> I'll say, oh, thanks for seeing the ear today or thanks for seeing the lump um, and that's my record then because I've got a message with it so I can look back on my messages and see you know if it got sorted out or not if not then obviously <clears throat> I just say you know still got a bit of a, an ear problem I've cleaned it again today but probably needs to go back to the vets for something else I know my dog has a reoccurring one, or he did do, we've, we've sort of got to the bottom of it now. Um, it flared up during lockdown and we had to do a Zoom thing. Um, I had to describe and show and what have you. Um, and he gave me some stuff that didn't really do anything. I went and picked up the prescription. But then when we went back to see them in person, they actually swabbed the air um, and uh, they were able to then find out what bacteria was causing the ear infection and then medicate it like that. So, um, you know, unless you get to the root problem, um, you, it does, you know, it doesn't, like any, you have to see obviously the cause through, like we would take antibiotics, we need to see the cause through. Same with that, with the ear issues or whatever issues that we're, you know. And I'm just waffling on. Five minutes. Oh, Misty Moo. <laughs> oh, I'm gone. And Misty Moo is sat outside. Are you going to come for a bath now? Come on, sweetie. Yeah. Oh, yeah.